Alfa Romeo has just unveiled their latest model, the Milano, and naturally, they did it in Milano. This Alfa Romeo doesn't look like any Alfa Romeo before it. It also offers a glimpse of what to come. A new Stelvio will come next year, and after that a new Giulia in 2026. No one knows more about the future of design at Alfa Romeo than Alejandro Mesonero Romanos, the head of design at Alfa Romeo. We had a chat with him about the Milano and the future of design at Alfa Romeo. When the Tonale came back, it brought back the old three lights. Is this going to be Alfa Romeo from now on? Yes, the three elements, uh, what we call the three by three, it's something that actually started with the Proteo uh, concept okay. car back in the 80s. We want to keep, uh, we kept that on the Tonale, we want to keep it in the Milano and in the future cars. Of but is, is this kind of uh, light signature is going to be Alfa Romeo from now on, yes. on is, or is it since Milano the, yeah. exclusive? Since the Tonale, we want to bring it in, but always with a small uh, evolutions. So design is something that is evolutive. We did it with the Tonale. The same principle with the Milano is a bit different. What you will discover with the Stelvi is something amazing, and it will be uh, an evolution of this, but always with the same philosophy. So we cook the same dish, but uh, with complete different sauce. Is that hard with a brand like this? To, you know, there's a lot of Alfistis that have an idea that Alpha should look this way. Yeah, and you want to evolve? Is that hard or is it not exciting? I know and I understand uh, that the Alfisti, I mean, uh, Alfa Romeo is one of the hardest uh, brands to design, I think. <laughs> so we try to design a car that uh, will be appreciated by the uh, puristic uh, Alfisti, but also for the new generation of Alfa Romeo drivers because uh, you have to think that the, the brand has to evolve. If the brand uh, doesn't evolve, it will become obsolete. Is it easier if you take big step or me, it's a It's a relatively small step. Oh, okay, <laughs> so then the Stelvio. <laughs> wait for the Stelvio. <laughs> I think that um, it's important uh, in, the, in the design studio, we have uh, very clear where we want to be in yeah. a few years time. And, uh, and then uh, what we are doing now is to come back and to start to do this path little by little. So this is the first episode. The Stelvio, of course, will keep the philosophy of the Milano, but we will take it a step further. And the Giulia in 2026 will still keep a step uh, further. So you, you have something in the design lab that is 10 years in front, and then you took yeah. steps back from that. I always try to do that. Otherwise, you get uh, you can get lost. So we, we, we take a look to the long term, mm -hmm. and then we see how we start to deploy uh, the different cars to arrive to this long term. This is coming in two versions. What's, yes, actually, tell me about the idea about this. Actually, the Scudetto, the evolution of the new Scudetto uh, is dictated by the new functionality also. Because the Scudetto originally in the Alfa Romeo, in our history, let's say, it was basically uh, thought as an air intake for yeah. the combustion engines. What is happening now is that uh, there is no need actually to bring air inside even can be a problem for aerodynamics so we need to close it in the future because there is no need uh, and then the scudetto will be the place where we will locate all the others all the let's say aids so to the driving systems is that hidden uh, in, in here the now? future uh, this or car in, in the, the milano is actually a kind of transition yep. because it's a still i mean it's a car that is uh, full electric uh, but it's a car that is also uh, combustion. Mm -hmm. I always take in our, in our philosophy, let's say, uh, in the studio uh, with our team, what we do always is to try to resolve aesthetically functional problems. So aerodynamics, that's why we brought the Coda Tronca, because it's very Alfa Romeo, but because it's the best solution for aerodynamics. Uh, the new Scudetto, where we need less air intake than in the, yeah. in the past, so that's why we make an evolution on the design. So there is always a very narrow uh, relation between uh, functionality and design. And this is the beauty of uh, what we do, that we yeah. try to always find the right recipe to solve the functional problem with a, with a nice design solution. We want to put the written Alfa Romeo on the back and then the name has to migrate to the side, which I think is nice because when you are in the traffic and then you see the car beside you, you see the name very much. So it's something that is uh, new and is uh, it's going to stay for the next generations. And I like the wheels. 
The wheels it's, which are there's also the, like another elevation. Yes, it's uh, it's actually very unusual to see wheels with only four branches. Yeah, uh, and very this. unusual. Uh, yes, and the, it has like a kind of quadrifolio shape. And uh, we decided to paint one branch in red because when you see the car turning, it gives a little bit of a red feeling to the wheel, which is nice. It's not just silver or black, but it's a little bit colored. Is it hard to make a four? Yes. <laughs> because it's very rare. It's, it's very rare. Yeah. But it's, uh, it has an advantage also in terms of uh, weight. Other brands are copying this. Well, actually, uh, this was something that is very alpha. Okay, other brands, uh, I don't mention them. Uh, even a brand I worked for in the past, uh, they have these kind of things. It's not new, but in our case, it's totally justified because I wanted to have a kind of visual power around the rear wheel arch. And for that, I wanted to have a, a line uh, that moves up, that gives, yeah, the keep the stance, that stands in the stance. So I had a, some problems to locate the uh, door handle here. We decided to bring it on the upper side. I, I, I prove so much. I like the stance, and that is, it's it, that it's um, a Strong. bit like this, athletic, but also agile at the same yeah. time. I have no question about that. They're actually, it's just for uh, like applause, because it's, this is a small car and a city car, and it's it really makes you know, always you know, to me. Happy. What is important is the design mm -hmm. somehow supports the the values of the brand. So we are about the sportiveness, agility, lightness, and this is something that the design should uh, should be expressed. So what you say, I think, is important. It's a car that is not fragile. It's sturdy. The car is really put on the wheel, yep. but it doesn't look heavy. It's not flat, it's not, it's something that is quite, when you see it in movement with the lights and so on, I mean, with the natural light, the car has a kind of uh, variable geometry. You see different things every time you look at the car because the surfaces changes a lot depending on the light. This is very new for Alpha. Yeah. What's the idea behind this? And well, the idea was to to have a, what we call a coda tronca. So it's a kind of a legacy element present in some of the most iconic Alfa Romeos of the past because aerodynamically it works to have a kind of an edge that goes around all the rear of the car this pays off aerodynamically uh, and then I wanted to have it also uh, integrated with the rest of the car I didn't want to be an element that is only separated from the rest mm -hmm. so that's why we came we came with the idea of the window that becomes lamp becomes coda tronca everything together. Additionally, we have these two lines that uh, instead of going like in a normal car in a kind of uh, yeah. open trapeze, they are inverted trapeze to have the impression of a speed and to increase the space that we have here for the shoulder in body color. So the car looks a little bit more muscular. For me, there's an action going up here and there's an action going down. This the idea basically is when you see the car, when you see the car from far away, yeah. you see uh, this Coda Tronca uh, which, uh, let's say that is very clear. It's, uh, but it's not sad. It's just underlining the shape of the car. The eyes are not sad. The eyes are straight. Yeah. So you have the coda tronca, but it's not sad. It's, uh, it's a straight, and when something is a straight, it's, it has character. It's uh, parallel to the ground, and the car is really sitting stable. It gives you the idea of stability. I mean, one of the first things when I arrived to Alfa Romeo, I said I love the, 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 the logo because it's fantastic. But somehow it's a pity that we don't have the, the writing. We have the most beautiful writing in the car industry. Yes. And this is since uh, 1910. So I was saying we should use it. We should put it on the back of the car. We should be proud of Alfa Romeo. There's plenty of other logos Alfa Romeo everywhere in the wheels, the steering wheel, front. But at the back, I want to have the, the name of the car. And the car is an Alfa Romeo, and it's beautiful. So that's why we came with this idea of a classic writing into a modern uh, design somehow. Brilliant, great job. Uh, thank you thank very you much. Thank you very much. It's been, a, well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.